Welcome back to Wood Engineering. I am Jeff Orochko from Carleton University, and in this video, we're going to continue to talk about uh, strength, uh, lateral resistance of nailed connections. Uh, in the previous videos, we looked at the geometry and um, the spacing requirements, and then in the second video, we looked at what is the strength for just one individual nail in a connection in shear. And now we're going to look at how do we build up for a full connection, what is the total strength of a uh, nailed connection. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is the equation from the standard. Um, it's the same in 14 and 19 as is most of most of the things that we're talking about in this course. Um, so we have our overall strength, NR, capital NR, equal to um, the NU, which is basically the individual nail strength modified to account for our modification factors for duration, <clears throat> service condition, and treatment. And then we have a uh, number of fasteners, NF. So if I have 10 nails, obviously I'm gonna have to multiply my strength for each individual nail by 10. And NS, which is the number of shear planes in the connection. So for two shear planes, I'm going to get a double the strength as uh, we talked about in uh, one of the previous connection videos. And then we have this catch-all modification factor, JF, which includes four different conditions um, that we need to consider. So we multiply all these things together and um, we get our total connection strength. Okay, so number of fasteners makes sense. Number of shear planes makes sense. Capital NU is just like when we have a lowercase f, uh, like for example, when I have my tension strength FT. So here I have basically my individual nail strength NU and I multiply it by KD, KS, FKT. We're very used to doing that. So that's like getting our capital FT from our small FT for example, for tension design, and um, then I have my JF. But before I get to JF, um, I just wanted to remind you of um, how I define three-member connection versus a two-member connection. Okay, so a three-member connection doesn't mean I have three members, okay? It's counterintuitive. Okay, a three-member connection by definition means that one nail, each nail, is connecting all three members. So if I have a connection that looks like this, I have my nail, goes all the way through three members, and you know I might have uh, the next nail might be nailed from the other side, could be nailed from the same side, okay? But each of those nails intersects um, two shear planes, okay? By definition for a three member connection. So this one is a three member connection. And all three member connections will have NS equals two, number of shear planes equals two. Okay, all the Johansson yield equations for those three member connections assume that NS is gonna be two. Okay, then, um, uh, but the other case that I could have is maybe I don't have nails that are so long. Um, maybe I am just basically having each nail um, go from one member into the center member and I'm doing that from each side, for example, something like this. So now each nail only intercepts one shear plane. Okay, this is not a three member connection. This is two separate two member connections. So the NS, the number of shear planes for each one is gonna be one. So basically I can design, I can design the one connection. Uh, I can design like the top part of the connection. Then I can design the bottom part of the connection um, the only wrinkle here is I will have to um, satisfy the spacing requirements um, here for um, both sides of the connection simultaneously. So obviously these nails uh, have to be spaced far enough apart that they're not going to cause splitting of the central member. Okay, so um, that kind of penalizes me a bit. Okay, so now what about all of these um, fastening factors? That is the factor um, JF. Okay, so JF is basically a multiplication of four different uh, potential factors for strength of nailed connections. And they depend on um, uh, JE is for end grain, uh, JA is for toe nailing, JB is for nail clinching, and JD is like a system effect factor for shear wall and diaphragms. So I'm gonna go through each of these one by one 
and uh, draw some pictures to make them hopefully a bit clearer. Okay, so I've indicated the grain. So let's say I have these two pieces of wood and then I wanna nail them together. But the way that I decide to nail these together is I go from the end of this one and I nail into um, this other one. Okay, so I'm nailing um, basically into the end grain of the second piece. So this looks something like this. Here I have, uh, here I have one piece and I'm putting like this my second piece and then I am nailing, if I can hold all these things at the same time, I am nailing um, into the end through this piece and into the next one. So you can see that in the embedded piece here, I am nailing basically right into the end grain. Okay, so I've indicated the grain directions here. Um, so nailing into the end grain um, is not great. And we have to reduce our strength, why? Okay, so if I have my um, bundle of straws here, okay, if I nail into the side of that bundle of straws, um, you know, I get good friction behavior here. Everything is held nice and tight. Now you can imagine that if I am nailing into the end of the bundle, okay, I don't wanna go inside the straw, but in between the straws, okay, let me allow that to focus or something. It's a bit hard to see because of all the white. If I nail it into the end, then you can see that it is kind of um, easier to um, separate those fibers apart. So when I want to bend this in shear, I'm kind of, I'm bending the fibers. And that is going to, uh, you know, that mechanism has a lower strength. So if I nail it to end grain, I'm allowed to do it. In this case, unless I'm doing withdrawal. Here I'm allowed to do it, but I have to um, reduce my strength. So if I'm nailing into the end grain, then I have to take this factor, oop, J-E, not J-A. I need to take this factor J-E into account, which reduces my strength by one third. And if I'm not nailing into end grain, then I just set J-E equal to one. Okay, so that's end grain factor. Next is the toe nailing factor. Okay, so let's say I'm doing something similar and I wanna nail these two pieces together. Um, but instead of nailing from the bottom up here, um, you know, like let's say that this is a stud sitting on a bottom plate and a light frame wall. Um, instead of nailing up from the bottom, what I can do is I can do a toenail, which means that I start at the side and I nail in on an angle. Um, you know, if you've done any construction, you've probably done this before. Um, it is a bit awkward. It's hard to get it exactly right. Um, and there is actually a requirement for what the angle of this has to be. So um, this angle here is required to be 30 degrees. <laughs> now, I mean, you're not gonna get a protractor out when you're doing this, but with practice, you know, you can get pretty close to 30 degrees. The other requirement is on length. So um, if my total nail length here if I call that L, then I have to be uh, one third of L um, in the top and basically um, uh, the rest uh, embedded in the bottom piece. I mean, it's not gonna be two thirds vertically because um, of the angle, the 30 degree angle. So if I do toenail like this, it's gonna be stronger than nailing into end grain. And uh, I will apply still a reduction factor though of 0 0.83 on my strength because I'm not doing um, I'm not doing totally side grain kind of shear. Otherwise, we're going to use a factor of 1.0. Okay. Okay. So next one is the nail clinching factor. Okay, so this one only applies to two member connections. And so this is only two member connections. Okay, basically what I do is, you know, if I nail a nail through, um, you know, I can use a nail that is longer than I need to get um, just into the next member, right? So I can go a little bit longer. And furthermore, what I can do is after I have that nail that is a bit longer, what I can do is I can take my hammer 
and I can bend down the point of the nail sideways. So basically I nail through, then I go to the other side, I get my hammer and I hit the nail sideways. Like I, I, I smash the nail like this, hammer it, and then um, basically I tilt down the, the end. Okay, so what that does is it prevents withdrawal and um, that makes the um, lateral strength higher because if I now want to bend my nail, um, you know, when we talked about uh, the rope effect, if I want to bend this nail, you know, as it goes down, it also has to come in, right? So as this thing bends down, the point here, although it goes down and it also comes in, right? Because it's moving on the arc of a circle. But if this is restrained by the clinching, then as it moves down, it is engaging this nail more and more in tension than it would have otherwise. So it provides even more strength on top of what we were already would be assuming for um, for the rope effect, for example. Um, so it holds everything together better, basically. So um, hammer down. Okay, so if I do that, then I get a 60% bump on my strength. And I only use that for uh, two member connections. Okay, the last one is the shear wall diaphragm factor. Okay, so shear wall diaphragm factor um, accounts for the fact that if I'm building, you know, a shear wall and I have my studs and I have my plates and then I put plywood on top and I'm going to use a whole lot of nails. And same thing for a floor diaphragm where I have floor joists and on top I have plywood and that plywood is nailed with a whole lot of nails. And so this is kind of like a system effect factor. Since I have so many nails, um, I'm reducing the variability of my response and I'm getting closer to the mean. So uh, that means I can bump my strength by 30%. Okay, so I just take all of those four factors, JD, JB, JA, and JE. I multiply them all together. That gives me JF. And JF is just the last, um, the last factor on the end of my total load lateral resistance um, equation for nailed connections. And so once I have that, I have my total strength and that's about it. So that's the whole process. First, I'm going to find my small NU, which is um, the individual nail resistance. And I'm going to check all of the modes that apply to either a two member connection or a three member connection, keeping in mind the definition of two member and three member connections. And then I'm going to modify that by KD, KS, FKT. Then I'm going to multiply that in that in, um, individual nail shear plane um, strength NU times NS for the number of shear planes and then times NF for the number of fasteners. Multiply it by phi reduction factor of 0.8 and then multiply it by JF, which accounts for all of those other um, phenomena that we just talked about. And after I'm done all that, then I have my nailed connection strength. And I just need to make sure that I satisfy my spacing criteria, obviously. Um, following up on this video, we're going to start talking about um, how do we calculate withdrawal strength for nails. So actually a nail that, uh, how do I decide how strong it's going to be to pull the nail out of a piece of wood.